Norman Reedus, can we just talk a little bit about, about Daryl's kind of emotional journey since the beginning? His character has evolved so much from the beginning of sort of being like, really kind of like Merle's sidekick, really. And, and he's really grown into his own person and a leader and someone who's compassionate and empathetic. So can you just talk, like, as a performer, can you tell us what that journey has been like the last nine years? Well, I mean, it started off, you know, I came on in the third episode and that cast already knew each other. They had been doing press and they were all like super tight. And, you know, I have to come on and like, you know, I'm like, do you want me to throw the squirrels like this? Or, <laughs> like, you know, it's super confusing. And I'm like, you know, and they're all looking at me like, especially Bernthal is like looking at me like, you're going to screw this up. I know you're going to screw it up. And, you know. And then the scene after, he puts me in a headlock, and he really put me in a headlock. And he goes, he goes, uh, how do you want to play this? And I was like, I don't know, put me in a headlock. And he's like, all right, you know? <laughs> but in the beginning, you know, I, I didn't quite know what I was going to do yet. And I kind of had an idea, the Southern thing, and I knew that a little bit. But, you know, that first scene, the first scene I did was, you know, Merle, come down here, like, I got squirrels, let's do them up. You know, which is a crazy line, first off. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, you know, so I, I turn my back to him and I'm like, you know, going towards Merle. And, and when I turn around, there's like all this cast. There's like 13 people just staring at me, right? And I immediately got a chip on my shoulder. I was like, they hate me, right? <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's who this guy is. He's like, you, you hate me? I hate you too, you know? And, and that's just how I started. And then everything kind of came out of the side of my face. You know, like I talk to you like this, but you know, if I'm gonna look at you directly, I'm gonna like probably stab you. Or like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So everything kind of came out like that. Like, don't look at me, like, you know, huge chip on your shoulder. And then as the show progressed, especially like maybe the third season or something, whenever something went down, uh, you know, maybe the second season, it would be John and Andy, and like, we'd be looking at a clue or something, and they'd all look at me. They'd all include me. And I was like, okay, cool, I'm in, right? Um, but as the show progressed, you know, Daryl started, like, you know, talking to you straight on. And now he, everything he says to you, he means, and you can believe him, and you can trust him. And he's not going to lie to you, and he's not trying to impress you, and, and he'll see through your bullshit. And the show, as it kept going on, I mean, I've seen like so many people on this show like come and go now, you know? And right now on the show, those ghosts of all those guys are with me, like every freaking scene, you know? And I, you know, it, it's true. And I mean, everybody knows like how tight Andy and I are and how tight Scott and I were and John and, you know, I'm, I still look back and I see I see Bernthal like you're gonna fuck this up, right? you know. <laughs> I still see it, but oh, well, that's Judas Dad for you. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's science. A, <laughs> but you know the it's the weight of Daryl has he's you know and I talked to Angela about this like he's gotten wiser you know he's always been that guy. I remember like when Andy left the show. Uh, I knew before everybody else knew, and we had a pact, like we were gonna leave together. I was like, don't you leave, if you leave, I leave. And that, we had a deal. And he was like, man, I, I, like I got two little kids, I, I gotta go. And you couldn't fault him for that. But man, like the hole that I was left with, I was like, dude. And, you know, and, but I remember I was talking to Angela, like, and I was like, don't give me Rick Grimes speeches. Like, Daryl's not that guy who's going to build a soapbox and like say, hey, we're going to build a community. Right? <laughs> He's just not that guy, you know? Um, There's not going to be a Daryl Tatership. No. I mean, he's going to go, I like you. I don't really like you very much. I like you, you know. And, uh, and she, you know, she's done such a good job of, of keeping Daryl Daryl, you know, which I, I, I'm super grateful for. Yeah, but it's also interesting, like, the, one of the, yes, of course. Yeah. 